J Michael uh, Electricana and this he bought in a sink. Twenty twenty was supposed to be a very adventurous year for me. Had a lot planned, but you know, COVID happened, and basically we were locked down. And actually, even at work, it became too busy. Come this year, I was supposed to go and live. I knew I had to do something different from what I normally do. I saw a documentary about how you could now drive all the way to uh, northwestern Kenya, all the way to, to the border. So I was like, okay. Let's go for that trip. I left on Monday, Monday the 9th. It was just exploring Rift Valley, went through Baringo, took the route through Kiryu Valley, and then I spent the night in Kiryu Valley. The day after that, that's when I made my way, just used Google Maps, through E10, Moi Ben, just came, came out just after, after Kitale, and then made my way through Kapinguria, all the way to Lodwa. I have a friend of mine called Michael. So Mike had spent some time in LA a few weeks before. He told me about LA Springs Resort. It's a really nice place and that's where uh, I should really go. Finally got to LA and I was overjoyed. As soon as I got to LA, I knew I wanted to go to Central Island because um, guys had really hyped the island and I really wanted to see like what that island is all about. Around 11.30, I was in my banda. That's when I saw the boat on the water. So I went to reception and then I met my crew. A guy called Osama and his assistant called Bobo. It was about an hour and a half to the island. We hiked to Crocodile Lake, then hiked now up, up the hill all the way to now the T Tilapia Lake. Really beautiful. When you're on top of the hill, you can see a lot of the surrounding breathtaking. We used the boat to go to the other side of the island and now we went up to the Flamingo Lake. Now Flamingo's, you know, the icing on top. In terms of mindset, I was not even there anymore. You know, like I was feeling fulfilled. All of a sudden, you know, I just glance at Osama and I see panic. And I look down and the boat is like half full of water. Because, you know, my feet were up. So I didn't, feel, I didn't feel it coming. I'm just trying to think like, uh, what do I do, what, what do I do? So that's when I was like, okay, let me let me call my wife. And I'm like, um, Jay, uh, Nicole Electricana, and this, he bought in a sink. So I quickly Googled Elias Springs. At least he told me where he was. I got the number and it was past five. Luckily, uh, a lady on the other side picked the phone. Her name was Marcy. I told Marcy, uh, there's one of your guests. Uh, his name is Derek. He came there on a bike and he went to an island on Lake Trucana in a boat and that boat has sunk. We could see the shore, we could see the island and it really seemed like we are right in the middle. So Bobo is like, Shkile umtungi kabsa, okay, shkile umtungi when he might. And then finally, I'm estimating after about one hour, we hear boat. You look at the boat's profile and it looks like it's headed straight for you and you're just like, Thank God. Then this guy just came and blew right past us. That was really devastating. So just tuck in for the night and hope for the best. Suddenly I heard someone shouting and I heard a very dull engine sound. I'm shouting and they finally see me and um, able, they're able to pull me into the boat. I remember someone is telling me at you, oh, they are not taking us back to the resort. They have to tell, take us to another island because they are taking, you know, they are about, they are about their business, right? It was really late by then. I saw a joint where guys are playing pool and um, asked someone for their phone. I called my wife. So luckily she picked up. Then I find it's Derek. He tells me uh, we have survived. So he's like, Google for Elias Springs number. Call them and uh, tell them we are such and such a place called Long Edge. Uh, come in to cut, send a car to come pick us. They kind of organized for you know some of the local boys who are over there. So they got us on a boat now to take us to a place called Kaloko. From Kaloko, at least we could be able to go back to the resort. Finally, we get to Kaloko, they put us on our pro box, and um, by the time we're getting to LA, it was like at 3 a.m in the morning you're feeling so tired but those guys were really nice they waited up all the time 
they had food waiting for us. I didn't try to Nairobi. To be honest with you, I wanted to ride, but I also understood that you don't live just for yourself. I knew that there are guys who are in Nairobi and they had gone through a lot as well. I had to put my bike on GPS and just take a flight back. The biggest realization that I got from all of this, number one, your safety is in your hands. The other lesson I learned is your, li your life is not just for you. If something happens to you, um, you are not the only one who's affected. You can still do the things that you love, but just add a bit of caution to that.